I think today is a day of shame. It's a day when the organization that oversaw the murder, the multiple murders of policemen and judges, are to be gifted their toxic veto of control over the very disciplines of policing and justice, and to be gifted it by the Democratic Unionist Party, which of course pretended for so long that it was the enemy of republicanism, which indeed on the, route, on the route that brought it here today has shredded so many premises, promises that it's unbelievable. Pledges from Nigel Dodds and Peter Robinson about it being political lifetimes, from Gregory Campbell about six years, from Jeffrey Donaldson about the retention of the full-time reserve being a precondition, from Nigel Dodds last week saying that unless they got Ulster Union a support which was essential, they couldn't vote for it. And yet today, they are going to join with their partners in government, IRA Sinn Féin, to gift them their strategic demand to transfer policing and justice into their terrorist inclusive government. And that is a shameful event. It's one that I never thought I would see. And it's one which I think should appall every Democrat in this country. The Ulster Unionist Party has shocked many commentators with their position today. What's your thoughts on that, at your uh, position in relation uh, to I'm glad that the Ulster Unionist Party has found some dignity and self-respect to withstand the maelstrom of a pressure which has been orchestrated by the NIO and the Joint First Ministers to put them under incredible pressure. I'm glad they seem to be withstanding that and I trust they do because Ulster men should not buy to the sort of mischievous, malevolent pressure that is being brought. And of course it's being brought as part of that international campaign to keep Sinn Féin sweet, to keep feeding them the concessions that they need. And of course this is but a staging post and it's not the last. But I'm glad the Ulster Unions uh, appear to be taking the stand they're taking today and I, I commend them for it. And you clearly see Sinn Féin's fingerprints over this present deal and this process. Could you talk us through what you think are the key problems? Sinn Féin, in their last parliamentary manifesto, made their position very clear. They said it was a strategic requirement of theirs to create all Ireland policing and justice structures. And that could not be advanced without, without the transfer of policing and justice to the Assembly and Executive and into the All-Ireland Bodies. And so for them, this is a seminal stepping stone towards their goal of All-Ireland control over policing and justice. And of course, this does deliver that discipline into the ambit of the North-South Bodies. For them, it is all about ending London British control of policing and justice and in their terms, establishing that control on the island of Ireland in a terrorist inclusive executive. So it is a key strategic demand. It's a key strategic demand buttressed for them by the fact that they've got it into an executive where they have a toxic veto, where they can, under the provisions of Hillsborough Agreement, exercise their veto on every piece of legislation which comes from the Justice Department, on every funding allocation to the Justice Department. And just as through their same toxic veto, they have wrecked and destroyed government in this building for the last three years. So they now have that same golden opportunity uh, to do the same to policing and justice and do it they will. But Hillsborough didn't end there. They got much more than that. Under Section 5, they got commitments through a working group to advance uh, their other pet projects of north-south expansion uh, in terms of the powers of the north-south bodies, a north-south parliamentary forum, a north-south civic forum, and a strategy on the Irish language. All pet projects, little wonder that Gerry Adams described it all as a staging post agreement, because what he has done is he has embedded, courtesy of the DUP, into that agreement the next staging posts of their demands and when things aren't moving to their timetable when they aren't getting what they want as quick as they want then we'll all be back to the brink again for another Hillsborough more gun to the head as in the past till the DUP stand and deliver again 
And what did the UP get in return? A review of a review of parading. And a jam tomorrow promise that they'll change the name of the Parades Commission. And that they will appoint adjudicators from the Joint First Ministers to deal with difficult parades. Think of it, Martin McGuinness, the man of his organisation orchestrated the campaign against Orange Parades throughout this province, is to be gifted the right to appoint, handpick his own placemen as adjudicators on parades. And we're supposed to think that's progress? We're supposed to think that's a unionist victory? It's all part of an appalling deal for unionism of generational proportions. And it's one delivered because the DUP was petrified of an assembly election and was prepared to sign up for whatever it took to avoid that. And that's why we're here today in this position where a victory is to be gifted to Sinn Féin for the long-term attainment of that outstanding goal of getting policing and justice into their terrorist inclusive government. And finally, Jim, victims are concerned today that they have been ignored, many of their issues have been sidelined. Uh, you have championed those issues before. What would you say on this day to victims? Well, victims are right to be very angry today and very disenchanted today. You know, what lies at the heart of the iniquity that affects the whole victims issue is that wicked definition which equates victim with perpetrator, that which is ensconced in the 2006 order. Now, if ever there was an opportunity to apply political leverage towards securing change in that, surely it had to be at Hillsborough, where everything could have been put on the table. But to their eternal shame, the DUP didn't even try to make that change on the definition of victims. And so we will continue with this obscenity of equivalence between victim and perpetrator. Uh, yes, we have false promises about bills being tabled in this assembly to change the definition. You know, before every election, you can guarantee that promise is made. But that's a promise not going anywhere because of the veto which they have gifted to nationalism to stop it. And stop it, they will. So the one opportunity that they had in the last three years to really extract that change, they blew. They didn't even try, and that was at Hillsborough. So for that reason as well, victims have a right to feel badly let down, but also because today they see those, the organisation that made them victims, that decided policemen would die, that UDR men would die, that RIR men would die, that the uh, civilians like at King's Mills would die that the organisation that decided all that is today triumphant in attaining policing and justice into their terrorist inclusive executive. What a day of shame. Jim Alistair Stormont, thank you very much.